The inverse square law, in physics, is any physical law stating that a specified physical quantity or intensity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source of that physical quantity. The fundamental cause for this can be understood as geometric dilution corresponding to point source radiation into three-dimensional space see diagram. Radar energy expands during both the signal transmission and also on the reflected return, so the inverse square for both paths means that the radar will receive energy according to the inverse fourth power of the range. In order to prevent dilution of energy while propagating a signal, certain methods can be used such as a waveguide, which acts like a canal does for water, or how a gun barrel restricts hot gas expansion to one dimension in order to prevent loss of energy transfer to a bullet. <laughs> Formula Mathematically notated C intensity 1 distance 2 display style text intensity propto frac 1 text distance caret 2 it can also be mathematically expressed as intensity 1 intensity 2 equals distance 2 2 distance 1 2 display style frac text intensity underscore 1 text intensity underscore 2 equals frac text distance underscore 2 caret 2 text distance underscore 1 caret 2 or as the formulation of a constant quantity intensity 1 times distance 1 2 equals intensity 2 times distance 2 2 display style text intensity underscore 1 times text distance underscore 1 caret 2 equals text intensity underscore 2 times text distance underscore 2 caret 2 the divergence of a vector field which is the resultant of radial inverse square law fields with respect to one or more sources is everywhere proportional to the strength of the local sources, and hence zero outside sources. Newton's law of universal gravitation follows an inverse square law, as do the effects of electric, magnetic, light, sound, and radiation phenomena. Justification The inverse square law generally applies when some force, energy, or other conserved quantity is evenly radiated outward from a point source in three-dimensional space. Since the surface area of a sphere which is, 4 pi r2 is proportional to the square of the radius, as the emitted radiation gets farther from the source, it is spread out over an area that is increasing in proportion to the square of the distance from the source, hence, the intensity of radiation passing through any unit area directly facing the point source is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the point source. Gauss's law is similarly applicable, and can be used with any physical quantity that acts in accordance with the inverse square relationship. Occurrences Gravitation Gravitation is the attraction between objects that have mass. Newton's law states, The gravitational attraction force between two point masses is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of their separation distance. The force is always attractive and acts along the line joining them. If the distribution of matter in each body is spherically symmetric, then the objects can be treated as point masses without approximation, as shown in the shell theorem. Otherwise, if we want to calculate the attraction between massive bodies, we need to add all the point point attraction forces vectorially, and the net attraction might not be exact inverse square. 
However, if the separation between the massive bodies is much larger compared to their sizes, then to a good approximation, it is reasonable to treat the masses as a point mass located at the object's center of mass while calculating the gravitational force. As the law of gravitation, this law was suggested in 1645 by Ismael Bouloudis. But Bouloudis did not accept Kepler's second and third laws, nor did he appreciate Christian Huygens's solution for circular motion motion in a straight line pulled aside by the central force. Indeed, Bouloudis maintained the Sun's force was attractive at aphelion and repulsive at perihelion. Robert Hooke and Giovanni Alfonso Borelli both expounded gravitation in 1666 as an attractive force Hooke's lecture, "'On Gravity' at the Royal Society, London, on 21 March, Borelli's, "'Theory of the Planets' published later in 1666. Hooke's 1670 Gresham lecture explained that gravitation applied to "'all celestial bodies' and added the principles that the gravitating power decreases with distance and that in the absence of any such power bodies move in straight lines. By 1679, Hooke thought gravitation had inverse square dependence and communicated this in a letter to Isaac Newton. My supposition is that the attraction always is in duplicate proportion to the distance from the center reciprocal. Hooke remained bitter about Newton claiming the invention of this principle, even though Newton's 1686 Principia acknowledged that Hooke, along with Wren and Halley, had separately appreciated the inverse square law in the Solar System, as well as giving some credit to Bouloudis. Topic: Electrostatics. The force of attraction or repulsion between two electrically charged particles, in addition to being directly proportional to the product of the electric charges, is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This is known as Coulomb's law. The deviation of the exponent from two is less than one part in 1015. topic light and other electromagnetic radiation the intensity or illuminance or irradiance of light or other linear waves radiating from a point source energy per unit of area perpendicular to the source is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source so an object of the same size twice as far away receives only one quarter the energy in the same time period more generally, the irradiance, i.e., the intensity or power per unit area in the direction of propagation, of a spherical wavefront varies inversely with the square of the distance from the source assuming there are no losses caused by absorption or scattering. For example, the intensity of radiation from the Sun is 9,126 watts per square meter at the distance of Mercury 0.387 astronomical units, but only 1,367 watts per square meter at the distance of Earth 1 astronomical unit an approximate threefold increase in distance results in an approximate ninfold decrease in intensity of radiation. For non-isotropic radiators such as parabolic antennas, headlights, and lasers, the effective origin is located far behind the beam aperture. If you are close to the origin, you don't have to go far to double the radius, so the signal drops quickly. When you are far from the origin and still have a strong signal, like with a laser, you have to travel very far to double the radius and reduce the signal. This means you have a stronger signal or have antenna gain in the direction of the narrow beam relative to a wide beam in all directions of an isotropic antenna. In photography and stage lighting, the inverse square law is used to determine the fall off or the difference in illumination on a subject as it moves closer to or further from the light source. For quick approximations, it is enough to remember that doubling the distance reduces illumination to one quarter, or similarly, to have the illumination increase the distance by a factor of 1.4 the square root of 2, and to double illumination, reduce the distance to 0.7 square root of one half. 
When the illuminant is not a point source, the inverse square rule is often still a useful approximation. When the size of the light source is less than one fifth of the distance to the subject, the calculation error is less than 1%. The fractional reduction in electromagnetic fluence for indirectly ionizing radiation with increasing distance from a point source can be calculated using the inverse square law. Since emissions from a point source have radial directions, they intercept at a perpendicular incidence. The area of such a shell is 4 pi r2 where r is the radial distance from the center. The law is particularly important in diagnostic radiography and radiotherapy treatment planning, though this proportionality does not hold in practical situations unless source dimensions are much smaller than the distance. As stated in Fourier theory of heat, as the point source is magnification by distances, its radiation is dilute proportional to the sin of the angle, of the increasing circumference arc from the point of origin. Example <inaudible> 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 Let the total power radiated from a point source, for example, an omnidirectional isotropic radiator, be p at large distances from the source compared to the size of the source, this power is distributed over larger and larger spherical surfaces as the distance from the source increases. Since the surface area of a sphere of radius r is a equals 4 pi r2, the intensity i power per unit area of radiation at distance r is i equals p a equals p 4 pi r 2 display style i equals frac p a equals frac p 4 pi r caret 2 the energy or intensity decreases divided by 4 as the distance r is doubled measured in db it would decrease by 6.02 decibels per doubling of distance topic <laughs> sound in a gas In acoustics, the sound pressure of a spherical wavefront radiating from a point source decreases by 50% as the distance r is doubled. Measured in dB, the decrease is still 6.02 dB, since dB represents an intensity ratio. The pressure ratio as opposed to power ratio is not inverse square, but is inverse proportional, inverse distance law. P 1 r Display style p propto frac one r. The same is true for the component of particle velocity v. Display style v. That is in phase with the instantaneous sound pressure p. Display style p. V one r. Display style v propto frac one r. In the near field is a quadrature component of the particle velocity that is 90 degrees out of phase with the sound pressure and does not contribute to the time averaged energy or the intensity of the sound. The sound intensity is the product of the RMS sound pressure and the in phase component of the RMS particle velocity, both of which are inverse proportional. Accordingly, the intensity follows an inverse square behavior I equals P V one R two Display style I equals P V propto frac one R carrot two Topic Field theory interpretation For an irrotational vector field in three-dimensional space, the inverse square law corresponds to the property that the divergence is zero outside the source. This can be generalized to higher dimensions. Generally, for an irrotational vector field in n-dimensional Euclidean space, the intensity I of the vector field falls off with the distance r following the inverse n minus one th power law I. 1 r n minus 1 
Display style i propto frac one r caret n one. Given that the space outside the source is divergence-free. Topic history John Dumbleton of the 14th century Oxford calculators, was one of the first to express functional relationships in graphical form. He gave a proof of the mean speed theorem stating that the latitude of a uniformly difform movement corresponds to the degree of the midpoint and used this method to study the quantitative decrease in intensity of illumination in his Summa Logicae et Philosophiae Naturalis ca. 1349, stating that it was not linearly proportional to the distance, but was unable to expose the inverse square law. In Proposition 9 of Book 1 in his book Ad Vitellinum Paralipomena, Quibus Astronomia par Optica Traditor 1604, the astronomer Johannes Kepler argued that the spreading of light from a point source obeys an inverse square law, original, secut se abent sphericae superficies, quibus erigo luces pro centro est, amplior ad angustiorum, ida se habet fortitudo seu densitas luces radiorum in angustiori, ad illumin in laxiori spheirica, hoc est, conversum. Nam per 6, 7, tantundum luces est in angustiori spheirica superficie, quantum in fusior, tanto ergo illi stipatior and densior quam hic. Translation, just as the ratio of spherical surfaces, for which the source of light is the center, is from the wider to the narrower, so the density or fortitude of the rays of light in the narrower space, towards the more spacious spherical surfaces, that is, inversely. For according to propositions 6 and 7, there is as much light in the narrower spherical surface, as in the wider, thus it is as much more compressed and dense here than there. In 1645 in his book Astronomia Philalaica, the French astronomer Ismael Bouloldis refuted Johannes Kepler's suggestion that gravity weakens as the inverse of the distance, instead, Bouloldus argued, gravity weakens as the inverse square of the distance, original, vertus autum illa, qua sol prehendit seu harpagit planetas, corporalis quae ipsi pro manibus est, lines rectis in omnum mundi amplitudinum emissa quasi species solis cum ilius corpori rotator, cum ergo sit corporalis immanuator, an extenuator in maiori spatio and intervallo, ratio autum vius immanutionis idem est, ac luminous, in ration nempi dupla intervalorum, sed eversa. Translation, as for the power by which the Sun seizes or holds the planets, and which, being corporeal, functions in the manner of hands, it is emitted in straight lines throughout the whole extent of the world, and like the species of the Sun, it turns with the body of the Sun. Now, seeing that it is corporeal, it becomes weaker and attenuated at a greater distance or interval, and the ratio of its decrease in strength is the same as in the case of light, namely, the duplicate proportion, but inversely, of the distances that that is, 1, d squared. In England, the Anglican bishop Seth Ward publicised the ideas of Bulaldus in his critique in Ismaelis Bulaldi Astronomia Philalaci Fundamenta Inquisitio Brevis and publicised the planetary astronomy of Kepler in his book Astronomia Geometrica in 1663 to 1664, the English scientist Robert Hooke was writing his book Micrographia, 1666, in which he discussed, among other things, the relation between the height of the atmosphere and the barometric pressure at the surface. Since the atmosphere surrounds the Earth, which itself is a sphere, the volume of atmosphere bearing on any unit area of the Earth's surface is a truncated cone, which extends from the Earth's center to the vacuum of space. Obviously, only the section of the cone from the Earth's surface to space bears on the Earth's surface. Although the volume of a cone is proportional to the cube of its height, Hooke argued that the air's pressure at the Earth's surface is instead proportional to the height of the atmosphere because gravity diminishes with altitude. Although Hooke did not explicitly state so, the relation that he proposed would be true only if gravity decreases as the inverse square of the distance from the Earth's center. See also Flux Antenna radio Gauss's law Kepler's laws of planetary motion Kepler problem Telecommunications, particularly 
William Thomson, 1st Baron Kelvin Power aware routing protocols Inverse proportionality Multiplicative inverse Distance decay